Hello all, welcome to Let's Learn Optometry. In this video, we will see the principle of Jackson Cross Cylinder. Also, please watch our previous videos on basics of JCC and procedure of JCC. In the fogging method, while adding plus lenses, the focal lines moves in the same direction. That is, it gets focuses in the front. The divergence of both the meridians increases. During JCC, it moves both focal lines in the opposite direction. That is, it moves both focal lines either towards the retina or both focal lines away from the retina. So, it alters this term's interval and either reduces or increases the size of circle of least confusion. Note the size of term's interval and the circle of least confusion here between these two pictures. Principle of Power Refinement Although we do axis refinement first, it is easier to understand the concept of power refinement before axis refinement. Consider a fully corrected astigmatic eye. Here, both focal lines are located on the retina. Let's see what happens to the focal lines when we place JCC in that eye. A point of adapter JCC is placed in front of that eye with its minus axis at 180 degrees. So, the power of the JCC in that orientation will be plus 0.25 with minus 0.5 at 180. The divergence of the horizontal meridian increases and the light rays gets focused in front of the retina. And the divergence of the vertical meridian decreases and the light rays gets focused behind the retina. The circle of least confusion is located on the retina. Now we place the minus axis at 90 degrees. The power of JCC in that orientation will be plus 0.25 with minus 0.5 at 90. In this position, the divergence of the horizontal meridian decreases and the light rays gets focused behind the retina and the divergence of the vertical meridian increases and the light rays gets focused in front of the retina. Note that the interval of term and the size of circle of least confusion are same in both the positions. So, if we do power refinement with JCC in a properly corrected astigmatic eye, the patient will say that equal clarity in both the positions. Now, consider a uncorrected or undercorrected withdrawal astigmatic eye. Here, the vertical meridian will focus before the horizontal meridian. A special mention here is that, always remember that rays of light traveling in the vertical meridian will form the horizontal focal line, whereas Rays of light travelling in the horizontal meridian will form the vertical focal line. Most of the textbooks mention in terms of focal lines. I will be explaining in terms of meridians for your easy understanding. So, from this picture, we can say that vertical meridian is focused in front or the horizontal focal line is focused in front. Both are same. Now, we place the JCC with its minus axis at 180 degrees. This will cause the horizontal meridian to move forward and the vertical meridian to move backwards from their previous positions. Thus, both focal lines will move towards the retina. Note the size of circle of least confusion becomes smaller and the interval of term decreases from their initial position. Now, when we flip, flip the JCC with its minus axis at 90 degrees, each focal line will move away from the retina. Now, the interval of storm increases and the circle of least confusion becomes bigger. Note that for both the position, the circle of least confusion is on the retina as the spherical equivalent of JCC is zero. So, when we present the patient with these two positions, they will obviously prefer position one and report that target is more distinct in that position. Why to add additional spherical power during power refinement? The change in the power of correcting cylinder only changes the focus of one meridian and the circle of least confusion is moved slightly to the front or behind the retina. Thus, the spherical equivalent is altered. So, spherical power is added based on the changes in the cylindrical power. Principle of Axis Refinement In JCC Axis Refinement, we combine JCC with the correcting cylindrical lens. The combination of two cylindrical lenses at different axes will produce a resultant cylindrical that has its own power and axis. First axis 
axis of the uncorrected astigmatism. It is the resultant of the patient's true astigmatic axis and the axis of the correcting cylindrical lens that is placed in the trial frame. Second axis, axis of the JCC. Resultant axis, it is located somewhere between the first and second axis. All these calculations are based on the thorough analysis of the ob obliquely crossed cylinders. The patient may report that the resultant axis that is closer to their true axis will appear clearer. Example The true astigmatic correction of the patient is minus 1 at 90, but we wrongly placed the cylindrical lens at 75 degree instead of 90 degree. So, the resultant spherocylindrical is plus 0.26 with minus 0.52 at 37.5 degree. If a 0.5 diopter JCC is placed at 75 degree, the two axes of the JCC will be located at 30 and 120 degrees. We know that during axis refinement, we place the handle parallel to the correcting cylindrical lens axis so that the two principal meridians are located 45 degree away from the correcting cylindrical axis. So 75 plus 45 gives 120 and 75 minus 45 gives 30. When the minus cylinder of the JCC is at 30 degree, the resultant power is plus 0.75 with minus 1.5 at 32.5 degree. When the minus cylinder of the JCC axis is at 120 degree, the resultant power is plus 0.26 with minus 0.52 at 112.5 degree. The later orientation is less astigmatic than the former one. So, the patient will prefer this position when the lens is at 120 degrees. So, we rotate the axis of the correcting cylindrical lens towards 120, that is, towards the true axis, that is 90 degree. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Let's Learn Optometry for more optometry and eye care videos.